right, up and at him. Here we go on what's uh, going to shape up to be just a beautiful, beautiful day today. Spring is busting out all over. For one more day, things are going to change. It's Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz. It is the 21st, 22nd day, 22nd day of March, 2023. It's Wednesday. Thirty-eight seconds into the show, and I already screwed up. It's, it's winning Wednesday. This is it. Last blast. We've been doing this. We started doing this way back in September, maybe even October. Uh, all of these great ticket vouchers from our friends at the Wenatchee Wild. These ticket vouchers, however, are only good for regular season games. And guess what? They just got two left, and that's it. Trail Smoke Eaters are in town at the Town Toyota Center. Friday night, seven o five. Saturday night, six o five. And I got my final three. Family four packs to give away. This is it. So we're gonna have three winners today, three of them. Yeah, and they're each gonna win four ticket vouchers for some of the best seats in the house for Wenatchee Wild Hockey. But keep in mind, before you send in your emails, you have to use these either Friday night or Saturday night. Now, of course, you can always win them and give them to somebody else if you want. I don't have any problem with that. You can do whatever you want to do with them, provided that you win them. And you can't win them unless you sign up. Probably the number one rule of Winning Wednesday, so get me your emails. That's how you go about doing it. Winner at ncwlife.com. Winner at ncwlife.com. That's how you enter. Of course, you can enter more than once if you have more than one email address. You just can't enter continuously dozens and dozens of times over and over again on the same email address. We keep track of these things, and the general rules apply. Employees of local telecommunications solely on broadcasting and their immediate families are not eligible. Sorry, Jordan. Everybody else, you're eligible. Get in your entries. If you don't enter, you can't win. We'll do the drawing later on today. But again, can't stress this enough. We're going to have three winners. They each get four tickets. So it's you and three of your friends or you and two of your friends and one of your enemies. I don't care. Uh, but you have to use them Friday, Friday or Saturday. That's it. They're not good for the playoffs. Thank you, Wenatchee Wild. A little chilly, 34 degrees. The sun's coming up right here. And right now, we're going to get to the cameras around the valley. Quick preview. We had a fantastic soccer game last night between the Wildcats and the Panthers at Eastmont Stadium. Highlights, you don't want to miss it between these two rivals. Great broadcast, good crew, lots of fun there. And uh, we have a lot of news to get to, busy day in the bullpen. And in the back half of the program, two days ago Monday, on the Vernal Equinox, the first day of spring, we went up to Omi Gardens to visit with our friend Bonnie Orr and uh, Barbara. Barbara joined us uh, as well. Barbara Brink is a member of the Glad Song Community Choir. It's about 40 people who get together and sing because it's fun to do. And they do a bunch of nonprofit uh, concerts. They're doing a concert to benefit Friends of Omi Gardens. And of course, Bonnie knows everything there is to know about what to do to get your yard and your garden and your plants and your trees and the birds and the bees getting ready to go. So, Bonnie Orr with your spring gardening tips. She's also the president of Friends of Omi Gardens. And Barbara Brink will be joining me as well in the back half of the program. Now we can get going with our spectacular cameras. That is the Wenatchee Heights camera. We just took it and we turned it right down towards sunrise, which is now. It's going on as we speak at uh, 7 o'clock this morning, straight up. The sun creeps over the East Wenatchee bench. It goes down tonight over the Wenatchee foothills at 716, 12 hours and 16 minutes of daylight. I mentioned this yesterday. We're gaining literally about two and a half minutes of daylight a day. It's that time of the year when you get to March into early April. We have uh, some pretty dramatic uh, extension of the daylight. Camber 2 is going to take us up to Cougar Ridge. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Cougar Ridge. Good morning to uh, the Wenatchee Valley. There's the Columbia River, which looks more like a lake. It's, of course, it's now just a series of reservoirs. doesn't really do a great deal of flowing like it did before the dams. Big swath of Wenatchee, and the snow continues to recede like my hairline. Up to Green's Knob we go. We have not used this camera in a very long time. That's up Lake Chelan Way, uh, quite a ways up Lake Chelan. As a matter of fact, now we have SkyFi towers that go even farther up late towards Tahikin than the Greens Knob camera that we're using there. But the Greens Knob camera, uh, the Greens Knob tower, is the one that's farther up that has actually has a camera on it. Good morning to Lake Chelan, and finally, let's see what's going on at the very tip top of Badger Mountain, looking directly west towards the Wenatchee Valley. There's Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval. We'll be up there again this spring, summer, and fall. Looking forward to that. The Fancher Heights subdivision comes into view rather plainly, and of course a huge swath of the west side of the valley. A couple of weather notes to pass along before we get into details. It's going to be a little windy tomorrow. There is a rather cool and robust 
low pressure system that's going to slide down from the Gulf of Alaska, going to pay us a visit on uh, Thursday afternoon and Thursday night. It's going to be quite windy, especially out in the Columbia Basin. You folks are going to get a bit very windy at times. So Moses Lake, Freda, you were warned to get ready for some breezy conditions tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening as the system comes through. We're going to be breezy here. Uh, but not real windy. These are gusts that you see, not the sustained winds. We can see the gusts here in the Wenatchee Valley on Thursday night, pushing 30 miles an hour. Sustained winds in the Wenatchee Valley at about 15 miles an hour. You can also see the direction. And there's going to be quite a bit of snow uh, Thursday night into Friday morning into the Cascades. Looks like Snoqualmie Pass is going to get the brunt of it. But uh, winter driving conditions, it happens, even though it's almost April. Uh, winter driving conditions will be prevalent in the Cascades. Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, and spilling into Friday. As you can see, about a foot of snow, if not more, on I-90. Just about a foot of snow expected on Stevens Pass. And a little bit in the Idaho Panhandle, as you can see here in our viewing area. The snow is not going to quite get to us, but we could get some rain. It's a possibility. From the National Weather Service, how about another day of sunshine, 58? That's exactly what we hit yesterday. We did have a few high clouds passing back and forth. That's not going to be the case today. Nothing but sunshine all day long, not a cloud to be had. 37 for the overnight low tonight. Thursday, most of the day looks just fine. It's when we get in the afternoon that this system begins to barrel through. So we're only going to get to 53 degrees. It's going to cool us down. We start talking about a little bit of rain on Thursday afternoon and a little bit of light snow on Thursday night. Now, this is critical. Snow level is starting Thursday night is going to be about 2,700 feet. Eventually, overnight, in the wee small hours of the morning, the snow level is going to get all the way down to 800 feet, which is us. But by the time it gets down to 800 feet, the system, the moisture content of that system will have petered out by then. So we're not expecting any snow at all in the Wenatchee Valley. Friday, we're going to stay cool under partly sunny skies and a little residual wind. We'll top off about 53 degrees. Let's get into the weekend. Sunshine Saturday, below normal temperature of only 49 degrees. Very chilly on Friday night and Saturday night. Slightly warmer on Sunday. Looking good for Monday and Tuesday. Our normal high this time of the year now bumps up to 55 degrees starting today. So beautiful day today. A bit stormy. Thursday afternoon, Thursday night into Friday, we calm down and cool down for the weekend. All right, that's your weather forecast. Eight minutes after the hour on this winning Wednesday, the news is up, up next. You're watching Wake Up in Valley on the NCW Life Channel. I chose a career at Confluence South because I wanted to help people and I knew there would be opportunities for growth. I started as a medical assistant, but quickly advanced in my career. I received five promotions in only seven years, three of those in management roles. Most organizations don't offer that type of growth. Now, as a career pathway coordinator, I let everyone know, come join Confluence Health. Come grow with us. Clearwater Saloon and Casino has the best Vegas-style games in East Wenatchee. Come enjoy yourself and discover the nightly action. Win big and meet new friends at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino. It's the National RV Show at the Grant County Fairgrounds in Moses Lake. March 16th through the 26th. With tons of vendors, a scavenger hunt for the kids, and enter to win a new RV. Top manufacturers are coming from across the country, like Winnebago, Holiday Rambler, Forest River, Thor, Flagstaff, Land Design RV, and more. Check out the enormous selection of both new and used RVs, motorhomes, travel trailers, fifth wheels, with huge incentives and lifetime warranty. The financing options are amazing. So come on down to the National RV Show at the Grant County Fairgrounds in Moses Lake. March 16th through the 26th. Bring beauty to your life and create your own vision at Chelan's premier lifestyle store. Willow features unique clothing, jewelry, and home decor only in Chelan. Lake Chelan Sports is the place to find top brands like Hoka, Ons, Patagonia, and now a full line of Viore products. With excellent customer service, Lake Chelan Sports has what you need. Culinary Apple is North Central Washington's premier kitchen store with everything you need to elevate your own culinary experience. Beautiful early spring morning, although it's a little cool. It's 34 degrees. 
upper 50s, maybe even kissing 60 today, but lots of sunshine, a bit stormy Thursday afternoon, Thursday night into Friday. Lots of sunshine, but a little on the chilly side for the weekend. It's 10 minutes after the hour, nearly a year after it was filed. That lawsuit by Confluence Health employees claiming their required COVID vaccinations were unconstitutional has been thrown out of court. Douglas County Judge Brian Huber granted final dismissal on Monday. Huber first threw out the case back in November, saying that the 92 current and former health workers failed to establish a legal claim that their unspecified religious beliefs should have shielded them from the vaccination requirement. But the plaintiffs, who were led by former East Wenatchee Mayor Steve Lacey, asked for reconsideration, and Huber ruled again that their claim failed to state what religious beliefs were at stake or which of the Confluence employees asked for an exemption. Confluence Health, of course, put stringent COVID vaccination policies in place at the height of the pandemic three years ago, following Governor Jay Inslee's executive order. Now, those policies have since been modified to allow some unvaccinated employees to return to work at Confluence Health at their campus and at their clinics. It's unanimous. The Chelan County PUD Board of Commissioners have agreed to swap some land with the city of Wenatchee. That way they can make the Confluence Parkway project possible. Commissioners with the utility voted as one on Monday to swap five acres on the western edge of the Haran Natural Area and Confluence State Park for an equivalent amount of property owned by the city of Wenatchee. Many other approvals still need to happen, of course, before the proposed two and a half mile parkway becomes a reality. Now, in exchange, the city is agreeing to build a, nose, a noise wall, a noise wall to protect the natural area from traffic disturbance and reorient part of the Apple Capital Recreation Loop Trail. The Wenatchee City Council will vote on its end of the bargain at their meeting tomorrow night. The Columbia River Drug Task Force is holding an online auction for stuff that they have and they can't find the owners thereof. A lot of the items were stolen from construction sites and are brand new, but the task force was unable to locate the owners. Now, the winner of the auction takes all of the items and is also going to be responsible for getting the items out of the storage unit by April 7th. The auction is underway as we speak. It'll run until March 31st at 5 p.m. There are two opportunities to actually see the items in person. The first is this afternoon from 4 to 5, then again next Wednesday, March 29th, again from 4 to 5 at the Eagle Transfer Company. Community members are invited to participate in Saturday's cleanup Lake Chelan action. Uh, action. It's called Restore the Shore. They want the beaches cleaned up at Lake Chelan and they need it. Volunteers will be grouped together to cover specific sections of the beach. They'll be asked to pick up trash and fragments of aquatic weeds. Participants should bring their own reusable bag, gloves, and trash grippers for a litter pickup. The event runs from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Again, this is Saturday. Volunteers are asked to meet at the city's marina parking lot near the go-karts across from Chelan Market. And for planning purposes, they're asking that volunteers RSVP. They're interested to know how many people are going to show up, and you can do so by visiting Chelan County's website. The Washington State Fish and Wildlife Commission gathered for their regular meeting last week at the Confluence Technology Center here in Wenatchee. And that means two of the commissioners who live in the area didn't have to go too far from home. And they made time for an interview with our news director, Jefferson Robbins, who asked about the role of hunting in the commission's wildlife management plans. Um, the, I don't believe that the role is changing. I think that um, in general, you know, <laughs> we have the highest population on the smallest land mass in the West. And it's just it's it's getting tougher for folks to um, find places to hunt and um, where they you know feel like they can take their families or and and so um, but the role of hunting as a management tool I don't think has changed I think it's still important um, and it's just that um, such a small so sort of in general right I, I kind of I don't think of it as hunters but like Rural, the rural element of this state, you know, is sort of less than 5% of the population. And so, um, you know, it's, it, when that, it's, it's hard to keep that voice out there, I think. And I think people feel sort of um, like they're not being heard. But the role of hunting is, has, has not changed. It's just the public's perception of hunting, I think, is changing to some degree. So, some part of the public's perception of hunting is changing, um, but it is still an important um, management tool in the state's toolbox that I think needs to be kept in that toolbox.
in terms of our commission, what we've done in this last year, we've gotten a lot of criticism, I think, that we're, you know, we're not, we're, we're not favoring hunters. Somehow hunters are losing and we're not giving enough to them. And the other side says we're not giving, we're, you know, we're giving too much to the hunters. So we're sort of stuck in the middle there and we need to sort of find that sweet spot where we can do that. But I think our, this commission has supported hunters. You know, we have, we've, past the hunting seasons with almost unanimous votes. We've delegated that responsibility to the director. We feel so confident about it. Um, there are a couple issues that are sort of hot spots with, uh, with hunting groups. But on the other hand, uh, we've had many votes where we've sided with the recommendations of the department on hunting issues. And so um, I don't like to see that conflict. I think that we share a lot more than we really, we really realize and we just need to come together somehow. And finally, if you watched uh, this show yesterday, and if you didn't, what the heck's the matter with you? Uh, we were using, during our Cameras Around the Valley segment, we used the Nanopoc Ridge camera. This is the camera that's high above uh, the Lake Wenatchee area. And it was such a spectacular view with the clouds and the fog hanging right over Lake Wenatchee that our top content producer, Uriah Darby, went ahead and did a time lapse of the clouds and the fog burning off and the sun doing his job up at Lake Wenatchee. Check out this cool video. Pretty darn cool. And by the way, he also conducted the orchestra. Guy's a renaissance man. That's what's making news on this Wednesday morning, this winning Wednesday. If uh, my trick knee is any indication, it's going to be another busy day in the newsroom. But we got a good group who puts together the news. And you can watch it on television at 5, 6, and 10. You can also watch it on our Facebook page, on our website, and on our YouTube page. And with a preview of the anchor, Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, an absolutely beautiful day on tap for us today with temperatures this afternoon near 60 degrees. I'll have all the details, plus a rainy look at Thursday and Friday on your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom will have results from high school baseball, softball, soccer, and the Mariners. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. If there is something out there that you think demands our attention, you know what to do. Get a hold of us. That's how, that's how this whole thing works. Uh, if you have access to the Internet, you're in. You can go to our Facebook page, drop us a note on the Messenger app. You can email us directly at the address that you see on your screen, or you can go to our homepage, ncwlife.com, and click on the Contact Us icon. When we come back, highlights from an unbelievable match between the Panthers and the Wildcats, and the Kraken did their very best to lose, but they didn't. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Life Channel. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You'll find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Twenty minutes after the hour, if you were late getting there or late tuning in on this very television set for the Wenatchee and Eastmont soccer match, it's okay. All you had to see was the last ten minutes of regulation and overtime. That's where all the action was. Wenatchee's Pierre 
Chani Vega took a pass from Alex Sanchez into the extra frame along the left flank. Flank put the ball past Ismas Alvaldo Sanchez for the game winner. The Panthers beating the Wildcats 1-0. Sebastian Maraga and Matt Wise with the call right here on the NCW Life Channel. Pepperman taken away by Reyes. Reyes, charge from yeah, behind, should a be penalty. a penalty kick. That should be a penalty kick, no doubt about it. Two actors, one scene. Reyes. And the ready. The whistle, the shot, and the stop! The stop! The second try sails over the crossbar! Sanchez! Brilliant! A bit of a chipper there. Oh, a good opportunity gone wasting as they can't connect with Maldonado and they charge him from behind. They charged an Eastman player from behind. I, I think it happened right at the line. I do yeah. not, <clears throat> I did not see a penalty kick. I think it was right at the line and Mr. Covarrubias agrees with us. I think this is probably Edgar uh, Milan. I... Right footed shot, bounces off the wall, not a major worry. And the second try sails even water. Taken away, Maldonado, Leon, inside the box. Aron Leon, the header. Mr. Russell, a bit of a position, still struggling to keep control of the ball, is still in play, and then Russell finally takes over. My goodness gracious. Anything goes for a minute. Edgar Leon. Oh, nice move, fooling his mark. Ocampo, and there is the whistle that tells us that we're going into overtime. Vidal Hurtado quite happy, clapping his hands, encouraging his team, and a bit of a shoving match. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. Reyes. Right footed touch. He's got some leverage. Nice job. Johnny Vega into the box. Johnny, go, 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 go. Beautiful touch by Alex Sanchez connecting with Johnny Vega. And Johnny Vega puts it away for the Wenatchee Panthers. Uh, the outside foot is just something I kind of practice on my own a lot, especially shooting the ball. But that technique, it paid off, I guess, and I was able to play Chani a really good ball. All right, Chani, tell us about that play, please. The press from the beginning got us the, the ball, yeah. gave it to BB, back to Alex. I think phenomenal ball to me. All I had to do is place it, and it's a team goal. So it's big nine action underway, and of course the Panthers start. 1-0 with the overtime win. Other action last night. Take a look at the scoreboard from our friends at Les Schwab. Ike also went in overtime to beat Moses Lake 1-0. Quincy shut out Chelan. Cashmere quieted Omac. Bridgeport beat Tenasket and Brewster over Okanagan with Orville popping Pateras on the Les Schwab prep baseball scoreboard. East Valley of Yakima beat Wenatchee at Historic Recreation Park last night 5-3. Eastmont edged Eisenhower at Dan White Field 4-3. Moses Lake shut out Sunnyside 5 0, and Shadow Park stopped Afraid at 7 0. Curlew swept a doubleheader from Oroville. Okanagan topped Lake Roosevelt on the road, and Brewster blasted to Nasket 16 to nothing. On the fast pitch softball diamonds yesterday, Afraid to beat Wenatchee 11 1 at Wenatchee Valley College, Oroville, Edge Republic, Bridgeport mauled Manson, Okanagan down Lake Roosevelt, and Brewster beat Tenasket and in prep tennis yesterday. The Wenatchee boys edgy Moses Lake 4 3, but the Maverick girls topping the Wenatchee girls. Four to three. We now know who the Washington women are going to take on in the Super 16 round of the NIT College Basketball Tournament. Huskies will host Kansas State. Wildcats beat Wyoming last night, 71 to 55. Friday's game at Alaska Airlines Arena tips off at seven o'clock. And also, we inadvertently said Haley Van Lith and the Louisville Cardinals Sweet 16 game against Ole Miss was Thursday. It's actually Friday on ESPN. No lead is ever safe in the NHL. Crack and prove that last night. Seattle led the Stars 4-2. Three and a half minutes to go. Dallas comes back, scores twice. You got to be kidding me with a game tying goal. 0.7 seconds remaining. That sends the game in the overtime. Thankfully for the Kraken, Adam Larson won it in the extra session. This is Morgan Geeky on the pass, but Strong will hustle. Shot, tip, score. Tanev got the redirection out of midair. Angles it up high. Robertson, fresh off his heroics in Calgary. Haskin and shot. That one goes wide. Big bounce and scored. Hintz was in front. Slid down into the corner. In its way to Tanev. Bounces to Sprong, and he's got help racing in Larson. Sprong, left circle. Low shot, he scores. He snuck one past Ottinger. Robertson over the line, a cutting Haskin in. Robertson shot, blocked Alexiak, and now Everly wants to turn. He's got McCann to his right. Everly to McCann, score! 
Nick handles his way and then feeds it for Haskin. He's got a man to his right. It's Suter. Sends it low. Ben Johnston scores! Tremendous movement. To Donov Dosido or something like that. Behind the, the daddy dough. There you go. There's a shot score by Tanev in the high slot. Stars down by two. Have an extra attacker in front. Tip score. Pavelski. What a nifty setup. 15 seconds to go. Down for Ben to Robertson. Back to Ben. Up high. Haskinen. Left side. Pavelski. Shot ricochets wide. Rebound. Ben tried to get it in front. Five seconds left. Haskinen shot. It's loose. Where is it? They scored. They did it. Jamie Ben. The captain with under a second showing on the clock. Wenberg is still out there. McCann up ahead. Here's Larson. He'll step in. Larson backhand score. Adam Larson wins it for Seattle. 5-4 in overtime. Now for Larson, it was only his sixth goal of the season. He said this was a team win. This team plays very structured and with a lot of speed. And I think if we can be... Be on top of them, that kind of slows them down a little bit. So, uh, but obviously it was just a team team effort today. We had a lot of guys blocking shots, a lot of guys stepping up with some huge goal. Obviously, our, our fourth line had, had a great night. So, uh, and obviously Joey played amazing in that. So, it's just a it's a pretty great night overall. Cracking continue their road trip. They'll be in Music City, USA, taking on Nashville Thursday at five o'clock, and you can watch that on Root Sports Northwest. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Wednesday. I do copious notes when I do the Obscure Holiday. I have a couple of websites to go to, and I look into the history of the holiday, where it came from, with some tidbits and some fun facts about that holiday. These are my notes for today's Obscure Holiday. That's it. It's just National Goof-Off Day today. I didn't write anything else down um, because I'm a goof-off. So today is the day. This is a national holiday, of course. There'll be all the schools are out and banks are closed, government offices. There's no mail delivery today for National Goof Off Day today. So go goof off. You have my permission. I goof off every day and they pay me to do it. Still living the dream. I promised for myself when I was a kid I would not work for a living and I haven't done it yet and I'm 58. 28 minutes after the hour, let's move forward to today in history. 229 years ago today, March 22nd, 1794, the Slave Trade Act of 1794 was passed by Congress, signed into law by George Washington. What did it do? It uh, banned the export of slaves from the United States and prohibited Americans from outfitting a ship for the purpose of importing slaves. The first stop, you know, the first step on the end to, to slavery, it had almost zero effect because it didn't affect four nations importing slaves to this country and it didn't penalize Americans convicted under the law very much. You were fined, slapped on the wrist and told not to do it again. So the punishment for violating the Slave Trade Act of 1794 was really nothing much at all. It was a good, they tried, they would, we would do better later on. The Slave Trade Act of 1794, toothless, but they passed it on the state in 1794. Uh, we didn't need to do this. 78 years ago today, the war is all but over. Not, Nazi Germany is all but done. They're beaten. They're defeated. The Soviets are closing in from the east and the uh, Allies are closing in from the west. But the British bombed the bejesus out of Hildersheim, Germany for really no reason whatsoever. It had no military import whatsoever. It had no, they weren't making weapons. They weren't making bombs or artillery or even food or uniforms for the Nazi troops, and yet they bombed the hell out of it. 74% of the entire city of Hildersheim, Germany, was destroyed. Didn't really need to do it. Germany was over, but they did it anyway. And that was the war, 70, 80 years ago today. 47 years ago today, uh, that's the Big A as it was in 1976, coming to town at the Big A, the Who, or as they say in Great Britain, the Who. Here's some, uh, here's some footage of that concert uh, on the beautiful, sunny, warm day uh, there in Southern California at Anaheim Stadium with The Who playing at the baseball field. Huge crowd, everybody having a good time. There were a few gate crashers, some people 
hopped over the outfield fence uh, to get in for free. But everybody was pretty much on their best behavior. There was some indulging going on. As a matter of fact, it looks like a good time. Get a suntan, drink a couple cold ones, hang with your buddies. The Who at the Anaheim Stadium. So you're going, why, why are you spotlighting this? It was just another rock and roll concert in the 70s at a baseball stadium. It wasn't necessarily what had the, because the concert was on March 21st. On March 22nd, the next day, the groundskeepers for the California Angels baseball team noticed that there were hundreds of marijuana plants growing in the outfield. And they figured the culprit was people dropping their joints in the outfield grass and marijuana seeds sprout almost immediately. Yeah, the groundskeepers for the California Angels finds hundreds of little bitty marijuana plants growing in the outfield of their baseball stadium the day after a Who concert. Don't want to point any fingers. Uh, if you're a bit queamish, you might not want to watch the next video. I remember this very distinctly, 45 years ago today. Carl Walinda of the Flying Walindas, probably the most famous acrobat alive at the time, was in Puerto Rico to promote his circus act that night. Uh, here is, again, you might want to turn away, here's ABC News. Carl Walenda, possibly the world's best known circus performer, fell to his death today doing an outdoor stunt in Puerto Rico. For that, here's James Walker. The only place I feel alive, said Carl Walenda, is on the wire. And there he was this morning, 73 years old, 120 feet in the air, 10 stories above San Juan, performing as he had for 58 years. The idea was to promote a circus act he was performing with his granddaughter. So, a high wire walk across the street from one beachfront hotel to another. But as he reached halfway, the ocean wind suddenly picked up, gusting to 30 knots. And Carl Walenda, the best man in the world on a high wire, fought for his balance. Two hundred people saw Walenda fall. Many rushed to help, but it was too late. Walenda's body had struck a parked taxi. He was dead on arrival at the hospital. And on a completely different note, this is the 60th anniversary of one of the milestones in all of popular music, not just rock and roll. The Beatles' debut album is released in Great Britain. Please, please me. Hits the record stores 60 years ago today, this very, very CD I have right here. Knowing it was the 60th anniversary, I brought the disc in. And then I looked around at my collection. I have four copies of the album on vinyl. I don't know why I have four copies. I think I have a problem. Please, please me. The Beatles' debut album, 60 years old today. Birthdays, William Shatner is 92. Years old today, of course, born and raised in Canada, has dual citizenship. Happy birthday to Captain Kirk and T.J. Hooker and everything else he's done. William Shatner, 92 years old today. One of only 18 people who have an EGOT. That means he has an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Only 18 people have ever done that. The Grand Slam of Awards, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. He was knighted. He's 75 years old today. And happy birthday to one of my favorite sportscasters, Bob Costas. Now, pretty much completely retired, still works for the MLB Network when he feels like it. He's 71. He can work when he feels like it. Happy birthday to Bob. Going to take a break. Got an opinion from Mike Mad Dog Mignotti. It's once again about Mike getting a little old. And uh, then our conversation with Bonnie Orr and Barbara Brink. We're talking gardening and Glad Song Community Choir when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Live channel. Central Washington Water is your solution for problem water. Whether you're on a well or municipal water, they can design a clean water system custom to you. Soft water eliminates water spots and scaling on fixtures. It protects appliances from hard water damage, saving you money. Soft water reduces soap usage that causes skin irritation and is a healthier choice to drink. Call for a free in-home consultation or stop by the store to have your water tested. Central Washington Water, your best water solution for home, pool, and spa. Hey, 
is my Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I recently posted a picture on Facebook, a throwback Thursday pic of my son and Tony and I in Mexico some years ago. In the pic, Tony and I are having a beer, and I'm holding a cigar. A friend posted, nice picture, except for the nasty cigar. Well, I beg to differ. Sure, cigar smoking could be considered a questionable activity. But the hours of relaxation cigars have given me and the opportunity smoking one has provided for me to just spend a quiet hour reading a good book has been worth any nastiness some might attribute to the cigar, at least that's in my opinion. Now the Bible says all things in moderation and the peace and relaxation a cigar brings is a pleasant life interlude. Of course, Rosie says three times a week is not moderation, uh, but I beg to differ. <laughs> this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everyone's entitled to my opinion. <laughs> you don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state of the art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event. Welcome back to the program. It is the Vernal Equinox as we tape this Monday here at Omi Gardens. This airs on Wednesday, but we always tape, whether it's the equinox or the solstice, or if the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter is <laughs> rhyming with Mars, and peace will guide our planet and love will steer the stars. It's our own Bonnie Orr here to talk about your spring gardening trips. Bonnie Orr, woohoo! Woo, hello, How hello. You doing? I'm doing fabulous. What a winter we had, eh? Oh, let's talk about that. All things considered, January and February were all kind of sort of normal, uh, but December was certainly not. No, no, December was not. We had, uh, I think, eight, our, our average high temperature was about eight and a half degrees below where it should be. And our overnight lows were about eight and a half degrees below where they should be. And we had over 20 inches of snow. It snowed and it stayed. And my question is, what is as it should be? I mean, we don't know what normal means anymore. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It, well, and the same with the summer heats. We don't know what's normal anymore. And we're going to talk about that in just yeah. a little bit. Um, well, right off the talk, let's talk about snow mold because I've, I, I'm allergic to snow mold and I've never had it this bad that I can remember. What's going Everyone on? Everyone who has a lawn has snow mold. Okay, so what happened is that the ground was quite warm and um, because it, it hadn't even gotten into the 40s, you know, during the day and it snowed on November 2nd. And because the ground was warm, a, um, it, uh, and the light goes through the snow and it grew snow mold. <laughs> and if you had fertilized your lawn in the fall, you got even more. So it has nothing to do with the fact that I never got a chance to rake up my leaves nope. before the snow came? Nope, no. Nope. The leaves would just, would just um, kill spotches of lawn where the light couldn't get down to the lawn because the lawn grows, continues to grow under the snow. That's right, it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we had a, a cold and snowy December, but then January and February kind of evened out a little bit. There but was February nothing... was dry. It was dry. It was yeah. a dry February. Yeah, yeah. It was a dry February. So is that is what does that put us as we welcome spring? Uh, as far as what we need to know right off the bat, is what did winter do to our yard? Much of anything really? Well, you know, I I did um I did a little, you know, dig into the soil, and the soil is moist about six inches down. Okay. Is that regular, normal? Oh, okay. uh, a little dry, I think. Okay. I think February dried us out some. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's a little bit dry. Yeah. It looks like La Nina is over. We've had, we've been on this roller coaster for two or three years now. All things considered, the Climate Prediction Center issued their their forecast for basically spring, March, April, and May. Uh, the, what they call the calendar spring it doesn't really line up with the solstices and equinoxes, but close enough. And they say it's pretty much going to be normal. Yeah. All things considered. Right, and let's hope we don't have to, like, we had a cold, remember we had really, really wet two years ago, and we had really cold, so who knows what the spring is holding for us. Yeah, for those who don't remember, the April of last year was the coldest, wettest April ever, ever. measured, yeah. and yeah. the records go back almost 90 years. That's just remarkable. It, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Cool. Pretty amazing. So, you know, um, uh, I think that 
watering correctly is going to be really important, including starting watering correctly um, in the spring. Uh, you need to have, a, probably for trees, about a 12 inch water profile. Um, and um, not too much and not, I mean, you don't want to have so much that you make puddles and things, but minding how you put down one inch per week until it starts to get warm, whenever that happens, and then go up to two inches a week, and not more than that. But watering correctly is going to be important this year, and so is mulch. You know, I talk about mulch every year, don't I? But mulch makes such a difference. First of all, you don't have to weed as much, but secondly, it helps retain water and helps about evaporation not take place as rapidly. Every year Bonnie and I talk about this, the first nice spring day of the year and the garden centers start bringing in their plants and their trees and their shrubs and their flowers and it's always too early to plant, okay, always. So I, I checked soil temperature this morning and it my, my soil temperature was 46, okay? And okay, at 50, is when the forsythia blooms and that's when you want to do pre-emergence and we have um, terrible terrible problems right now in most lawns with spotted spurge purslane and oxalis and you need to buy a product if you want to control them um, that has those weeds listed on it uh, on the on the product and it needs to be put down because it's a pre-emergent and you have to thatch if you haven't thatched for a while because that interferes with watering and everything else. Um, the problem with people wanting to plant their gardens, you know, people say, oh, the birds ate all my seeds or something. But really, the seeds rotted. Okay, beans. The soil needs to be 70 degrees to plant. That happens at the end of May. And so planting a garden before the end of May, um, is you're just setting yourself up for failure, I think. <laughs> Our rule of thumb growing up is we always planted the garden uh, on Mother's Day, and that always seemed to work okay, out pretty Mother's good. Day is, is, is May, May, the beginning of May. People here used to always plant on, um, on apple blossom, but it really is early. The soil temperature, okay, it needs to be 70. Your okay. friend Mike did a lot of homework, and we want to appreciate him because yeah, he put Hammer. together some graphics. Oh. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, and the, the graphics that you're going to see on the screen and the numbers are Scary? What, how would you describe well, it? Startling, I think. Startling. Walk people through what we're talking about. But we are, okay, so that the, the number of days over 86 degrees has increased dramatically since 2014. Just in those, in those nine years? Yeah, yeah. And which means that you, if you have plants that, that don't have a horticultural um, set point for higher temperatures, your plants are not going to thrive. And this is going to be really hard on plants such as dogwoods, which always get toasty on the end of their leaves. But especially so, plants are not designed to pull up lots and lots of water. And as it gets hot, and last year how windy it was, hot and windy, boy, that desiccates things in a hurry. And we've had back-to-back -back really bad years for tomatoes. Uh, we've, yeah, uh, yeah. The, your tomato fanatics out there it has not been a good uh, run lately. No, no. And, and we, we actually had to um, harvest tomatoes in September instead. Yeah. yeah. They just don't like it when it gets hot. They get no. all pouty. And well, well, if it gets over 90, the pollen dries up and, the, and the, it doesn't set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that means you have to go buy those store-bought tomatoes that oh, look I, perfect I, and they just I've never stay. done that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't consider it. <laughs> I would eat I would eat anything before that. <laughs> What's next on our list of but, things to do, uh, Bonnie? Our, our, our next things is, um, um, uh, what are we, I'm, we're going to go down to the next part, so, Arbor Day. Arbor Day. Arbor Day. April 22nd? A April 22nd. And we're going to be with Sustainable Wenatchee mm -hmm. at Pibus. And we're going to be at Kashmir, Eniat, and East Wenatchee. I love those folks at Sustainable Wenatchee. Boy, their heart's yeah. in the right place, isn't, isn't it? it? Anyway, so we, we've, um, they've invited us to join forces, and so we'll be doing a distribution there also. Okay, and uh, distributing uh, plants in, in, that are native to the area, and we'll, we'll do okay. See, for the most part. The problem na is native. Native is sagebrush and rabbit right. brush. We I live mean, in a desert. <laughs> we live in a yeah. desert. None of the you trees know? that you see here at Omega Gardens grew here naturally. Every no, one of them was planted. every one of them was, was brought down from right. other places. So. You know? so, But yes, we chose shrubs, flowering shrubs that um, attract pollinators and also provide uh, some type of fruit for birds and things like that. Let's okay. talk zero scape real quick okay. because it, people go, well, what do I care? I, I'm on the irrigation ditch and I can water to the cows come home so I can have the plushest, greenest yard 
around, which is all well and good, but it's not necessarily well and good. It's not necessarily well and good, especially if you are one of these people who waters till the uh, cows come home. You also probably fertilize several more times a year than is necessary, which means that that product is being washed into the Columbia River because your plants can't pick it up that fast, you know? And so you're not doing anybody a favor. Xeriscape merely means that you are dealing with plants which can handle heat. And we need to consider that. And you know, the master gardeners have that Xeriscape garden down by the... Uh, by the uh, tr uh, On the riverfront trail? Yes. What, right the, along the Columbia, uh, the Apple uh, Capital the Loop train, Trail. Yeah. The train, the Sanders, mm -hmm. Sanders train. Right down there. Right down there. And people can go and there's all sorts of plants that bloom from the end of March until frost. A couple questions for you. We didn't have an autumn, so the leaves on my oak tree never came off. They were just right. hung on there. And then they finally did in one big plump. So I haven't raked my leaves and here it is March and they're still sitting on my yard. Do I have some issues there? You, you, do, need to, you do need to rake them because the lawn wants to grow mm -hmm. and it, they, it will be shadowed. You know, one of the things is I still have some trees that still have leaves on them, but as soon as the new bud, for, um, there's going to be a new leaf bud right behind where the old leaf was and it will push off the other leaf. You, know? uh, you mentioned thatching. I thatched my yard for the first time ever. I've been where I'm at now for about six years, five, six years. Never thatched before. Did it last spring. And I had the best year of my yard I ever had. It just thrived, and I didn't have to water it a great deal. Is thatching something you need to do every spring? No, no. Uh, it, it, it depends on the type of lawn you have. If you have a Kentucky bluegrass especially, it, it makes thatch. And thatch is old grass blades and old roots that are at the surface. And it, they just have, if it's more than an inch thick, the water cannot penetrate through. And so therefore the water just sits on the top and your, your lawn is actually thirsty. And the roots are also short. Usually the roots are only a couple of inches. Roots should be six inches deep. Well, like I said, my yard, having never thatched, I don't know if the yard had ever been thatched, come to think of it. It was amazing how much stuff came out. You had no idea how much stuff was in your yard until you thatch it. And then my yard was just so happy. All Very good. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, am, I am thinking about alternatives to turf grasses, clover being one of my favorites, as well as integrating. I have an area where I'm integrating wild strawberries as a ground cover in places where the lawn has never been very happy. What oh, about the people who have, a, who have a fruit bearing tree, uh, be it just a sun, single apple tree in their yard or a plum tree or apricot or anything like that? What do they, they need to do? They probably should have gotten their dormant sprays on okay. or their delayed dormant sprays on. Um, it makes a major difference on the quality of your fruit. Who wants fruit that's all marred up and rots before it's fully ripe? Okay, those dormant sprays are important. And then of course, we know that toward the end of May, you are required with apples and cherries to spray organically or conventionally. What else we need to know about while I have you here, Bonnie? Because it's the vernal equinox. It what is else is on your mind? equinox. Oh, you know something? I'm gonna look at this. Make sure you check oh. your nose. Yeah. You know, dealing with weeds, okay? Mm -hmm. There are some weeds that you can just scrape up. It's important to get rid of weeds before they go to seed, but just kind of spraying weeds when they could easily be pulled up, especially annual weeds, when they could just easily be scraped up, there is such a thing as herbicide resistance for weeds and insects also. So they'll get like, like an immune to it. Exactly. Okay. And this is a real danger to people who earn their living as agriculturists because even though we live down here, we know the wind blows and these resistant seeds can blow all over the place, like up on the plateau. So we need to think very carefully about using herbicides when maybe it's not quite as necessary. Good advice there. Good advice there. Because I know you're a big proponent of people over fertilize and they over water when they really don't need and, to. And over overusing herbicides yeah. is, you know, yeah. you know, there's a there is an appropriate time for using herbicides. Absolutely. We're here at Omi Gardens for any number of reasons. Number one, it's really cool. Yes. And number two, Bonnie is uh, once again returning as president of the Friends of Omi Gardens society for another term. Should I start calling you El Presidente? You, El Presidente, yes. <laughs> I'd like to be El Presidente. And we're going to bring Barbara on here in just yes. a couple of minutes to talk about the benefit concert coming up. Yes, we yeah. have all sorts of wonderful plans. Yeah. We, and we have a new cactus garden. Get out of town. No. <laughs> we'll get a shot of that yeah. too, all uh -huh. right? So uh, yeah, we got, uh, it's, it's the killer bees, Bonnie and Barbara. Barbara joins <laughs> us when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley.
Is your recliner as comfortable as this? Does it have lumbar support? The new technology in power recliners is simply amazing. Hi, can I help you? Well, yes, I was just telling my friends. Oh, about the great selection of recliners we have here at Boswell's? It's true. We have everything from pushback recliners to power recliners with all the latest features. Boswell's Furniture on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Welcome back to the program. Uh, Dan Coots, Bonnie Orr, and introduce Barbara. I'm going to introduce Barbara. This is Barbara Brink. And Barbara and I have known each other for years from the museum, and we're both um, on the Gardeners. board for Omi Garden Friends. And she is a member of Glad Song's Community Choir. Community Choir, which yes. is about three years old. Yep, we're just starting our third season. Yes. Talk about the genesis of this. this is a bunch of people like to get together and sing, right? Well, they do. Um, our director, um, my, um, Tim, Tim Meyer, <laughs> my mind just went, um, he started it three years ago and he decided there wasn't uh, choirs singing anymore, you know, COVID had happened and everything had shut down and so he just started asking who wants to come and sing and everybody who loves to sing, you know, came. There's about 40 of us now and um, our main goal is to sing for ourselves, to make us happy. Um, we want to sing for listeners because it makes them happy and we want to sing for fundraisers to help raise money for um, organizations that need extra help. And so we did several concerts last year. It was our full, full year. And one of the ones was the Friends of Ukraine and we raised, uh, helped raise $21,000 at that um, fundraiser. And now Friends of Omi Garden, uh, Gardens is um, getting ready to do their fundraiser on July 9th and we are going to um, perform for them in this beautiful, amazing garden with that view out there that's incredible. And um, I think the setting's going to be great. The choir's so excited to sing for Omi Garden and um, help uh, Omi Garden raise funds. And there's some specific needs that Omi Garden has. And um, one of them is they need to um, tear down the old ox yoke lodge that's falling down. It's 94 years old. It's going to tear itself down. Right. Yeah. Future, yeah. And then put something back up. There's a lot of fun, uh, funds needed for that. And we could sure use some parking lots, lights and that um, and redoing the parking lot. And that takes a lot of money. And there's just a lot of other projects that um, Oh my gosh, and you look at how beautiful this place is, you know, this is the I've, I've jewel of the valley. Concert. You could charge, you know that, you never do, you do, it's always for charity, you do it for free. Yep. Must be hard to, to pick the charities you can do and can do, but I mean, you can charge a mission get away with it it was we are fun we don't stand still and look at a folder we're moving and dancing and singing and laughing and and entertaining and we just enjoy it um, and it's going to be a fabulous evening and there's going to be wine and and food available and there's also going to be a flute choir a that, flute a flute choir explain that i have no idea what that it is. is a group of people here in the wenatchee valley who enjoy playing flutes as much as Barbara and her friends love to sing. And they're going to be the intermission when you can go and get some refreshments. Wow, and that's, that's July 9th. July 9th from, from 6 to 8. Eight. But your calendar for your, your choir is busy all year long. You guys, well, got, you guys our, got gigs all year. Our season starts in the 1st of May, so we're practicing away. And then we have three scheduled concerts set, and uh, we're looking for more. So if anybody knows of a fundraiser, we'll sing <laughs> it has to be a fundraiser you exactly. know we don't sing real for... quickly because we don't have a lot of time give folks an idea of your repertoire when they when they go to a, a, a concert from your choir what are they going to hear what kind of music what kind of we've sounds? got multiple um, um different types of music we have country we have um the moody blues we, <laughs> <I love> <laughs> yeah, we, got some uh, we do a once in a while sing a gospel song everything we sing is um that feel good music um 
um, Love Can Build a Bridge is a country version. Um, uh, I'm, I'm drawn a blank. We yeah. sing so many songs. We have uh, 35 memorized songs, which I did not think I could do, but I did. <laughs> And the one other thing I've noticed, and, and from these, you guys are having a ball. You're having a good time. Having a good time. Yeah, you're all That's, smiling and having a good time. If you could see our director, because everybody sees his backside, while we see his front side, he he just makes it happen. He is he is amazing. He just when he starts moving and directing us, you just want to sing more. And it's just fun. He just makes it fun. Bonnie, how do people uh, become a, a friend of Omi Gardens? How do they how do they get to be a part of your organization? They buy a season's pass. That's all there is to it. And then they volunteer for activities. You know, we've been working on the cactus garden. We always have weeding. Uh, last year we had Wednesday's wine and weeding. And uh, we have um, always chores to do in the garden. And we need people to help us write grants. And oh my gosh. The best deal in town is an Omi Gardens Seasons, Seasons Pass. Pass. It's ridiculously cheap. And you can come and go as you please during regular business hours. It's, uh, they should charge more. They should charge like you guys should charge. <laughs> you know, it, it should be a, a, a big deal. Thank you, Barbara, for taking some time out. And Thank you us. for helping yeah. us advertise for both Anytime. Omi Gardens, the Friends of Omi Gardens, and Glad Song. And Glad Song has a Facebook page too, so you can check it out. You can, they have videos of some of their performances. You can get a hold of them there. On the website, gladsong.org. Yeah. They got 40 members. They could always use 42. How are you doing for baritones? Yeah, you go, oh, we, baritone. need, we could really oh, use. Oh, Dan, wouldn't you in, have well, fun? I'm, I'm in the union, so, you know, uh, I, I, have to, I have to legally charge oh, for my service. Yeah, we, we need some bases, that's for sure. <laughs> Don't give me that. It's the killer bees. Thanks, ladies. <laughs> Thank Happy you. spring. Happy spring. spring. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley. We'll be right back. Ever wonder how wine gets from grape to glass? Chelan Ridge Winery is one of the largest wine production facilities in the valley and is now offering tours from grape to glass. Come on up and see how platinum level wines are made and then taste them for yourself. Behind this door is one of Wenatchee's best kept secrets. Behind this door you'll find things you can't find anywhere else. Behind this door is the new upgraded Riverhouse Cigar Bar. More of everything you come to love, the secret's out and the door is open. Sun's been up for just about an hour. It's still a little on the cool side. Still sitting at 34 degrees. Room for a nice day today. Forecast details are coming up. But first, one more reminder. Winning Wednesday, our last go-around for Wenatchee Wild ticket vouchers. This is it because these vouchers that we've been giving away all year long during the hockey season are only good for regular season games. They're not good for playoff games. So they only have two regular season games left against Trail. On Friday and Saturday, family four packs. I got three of them to give away. There's one, and there's two, and there's three. I got three of them to give away. So send me your email, winner at ncwlife.com, winner at ncwlife.com, employees of local telecommunications, solely on broadcasting, and their media families are not eligible. Sorry, Jefferson. And if you don't enter, you can't win. If you don't enter, you can't win. And again, you have to use these either Friday or Saturday, and that's it. But you can always win them and give them to somebody else. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, get, your, uh, get your emails in to me. We'll do the drawing a little bit later on today. All right, from the National Weather Service, one more look at your forecast. Bountiful sunshine, more than we had yesterday, and we had lots yesterday, too. I have about 58 degrees. 37 for the overnight low. Most of Thursday looks good. And then the arrival of a rather robust cold front, not going to last very long. It's going to bring us breezy conditions, significant snow to the Cascade Mountains, and uh, light dusting possible, but probably not going to happen here in the Wenatchee Valley. And this cool air is going to be hanging around, as you can see, into the weekend. Lots of sunshine outside of late Thursday into Friday morning. Sunshine is not going to be an issue, but it's going to get a little on the cool side. Anyway, it's typical early spring. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.